All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, real quick video. Let's just talk about just a very fundamental course. We're going to get into a little bit of math here, but I want you to make sure that you understand return on investment. If you already know that term and you already know how, how to calculate it, hit pause, hit delete, skip, whatever this is, whatever platform you're watching this video on, you don't need to watch it. This is for people that if I just said to you, hey, what's your return on investment? Um, and you're like, I have no idea what that is, or I don't know how to calculate that. Um, this this video is for you. This is a this is an important part that you really understand. So if you're not familiar with these terms, make sure you save this video or practice or even DM me. I can explain it to you a little bit further um, because this is how we're going to calculate when we get into the investment section if things make sense to to um, you know go forward with them. Everything about building wealth is about the return on investment and sometimes about the spread between your leverage and what the return on investment is and if that makes sense. Um, it also combines into the, our video with good debt and bad debt. So the idea here is pretty straightforward. We're just going to use a $10,000 example and we're going to use an 8% return. I'll always use 8% return if, in, in the videos and the reason why is because that's sort of just a really good baseline return on investment. The general rule is if you're getting an 8% return on your investment, it's a pretty good deal. And that's across the board, whether it be stocks or real estate and so forth. Like if you're achieving that, like you're in good graces, anything above that is better. Anything below that, you really just got to start to evaluate if that makes a whole lot of sense. So the idea is, let's just say um, you had $10,000 and you wanted to put that into something. If you take $10,000 and you're getting an 8% return on investment. So if I said to you, if you take your money and you put it into an S&P index fund and for the last 30 years, that S&P index fund, VOO is an example we use all the time, VU, you're going to get an 8% return on investment each year. What that means is you're going to get about $800 every single year. So, Year one, $10,000 times 8%, you're gonna get 800. So in the beginning of the second year, you'd have $10,800. A little bit about compounded interest. So that means the next year, you would be 10,800 times 8% because you now have the interest added to there times 8% and then you would get an additional amount of money. You're actually gonna get a little bit more than the $800. So, and that's gonna to start to build. And important for you to understand the opposite of that, like if you're gonna put that into a calculator, depending on the calculator you have, you can do 10,000 times eight and then just the percent sign, you'll get the, the $800. Um, but also you can do it by 0 0.08, was, which is the exact, is the exact same thing. So 10,000 times 0 0.08 equals $800 and that's how you're gonna do that calculation. And you'll have to do that over and over and over again as you would go into talk about different, different investments. On the alternative to that, Let's just say you knew you gave someone uh, you know, $10,000 and they said, hey, we're going to give you some money back or you put $10,000 in the stock, mar stock market and you got and you're like, man, I had $10,000 and now I have $10,800. Like, what was the return on investment? Was that good? And you wanted to figure out the percentage because it's the data, it's the percentage that's going to matter. Very simple. All you do is you take your $800 that's received, whatever you got back. So that's your, that's your principal, that's your, um, which you have minus your principal. So $800 and then just divide that into the 10,000. And of course that's going to give you the 0 0.08, the 0 0.08, which we know is going to be 8%. Um, so, you know, pretty, pretty basic concept, but it isn't very important that you understand that. Um, we'll give you small, one little small little teaser. And the reason why is when we talk about like this ownership idea and this control um, mindset, um, hopefully if you haven't watched that video, go back and watch it because these are all, all these videos progress. But the idea is if you paid off your mortgage, right? Mommy. The mortgages right now are about 4% for a mortgage. So if I'm basically being charged 4% of money, the, the money that I borrow, let's call it $300,000. Okay, so I'm being charged 4%, but if so, if I paid that mortgage down, I would no longer be paid or being charged 4% because I wouldn't have the loan anymore. So hopefully that makes sense. On the flip side, if I took, instead of paying down the loan, if I had taken that money instead, I'd put it into the stock market and got an S&P index fund, which is, again is gonna be that 8% year over year, um, just to sort of historically, that's where it's been, give or take a little bit, I'm gonna make 8% off the money. So if you had $100,000 to your name, what would make the most sense to you? Would you take the $100,000 and would you pay down the loan, which will save you from paying out 4%, does that make sense? Or would you take the 100,000 and put it into something to gain 8%? 
So the idea principle of a rich is it's all about the margin and the return on investment, what you're getting from it. So in this case, the reason why we teach control, not necessarily ownership, is because for if, for me to own that particular mortgage, I got to take a hundred thousand, I got to pay it to that to get rid of the four percent, get rid of the loan, and now I own it. But the issue is that I'm saving four percent because I'm not being charged by the bank. But what I'm missing out on because I put the hundred thousand dollars to pay off this loan, and I didn't put an S and P index, I am lose I'm losing the eight percent gain. The difference between the 4% and the 8% gain is, or the 4% um, that I'm gonna gain from not having to pay it versus we hear what I would earn is 4%. So kind of the idea is like, if I, instead of paying 100,000 here to save myself from paying 4%, if I just put the 10%, the 100,000 into here, I gain 8%. So this 8% percentage that I'm making, if I gave 4% back, because I'm still having this loan out here, I'm still positive the 4%. So that 4% on $10,000, if we do that, that's 400 bucks, right? So just kind of just kind of an idea, just a concept. Like if I take 10,000 and, and I pay that off, just a recap, and 4%, I'm losing 400 bucks a month because I'm paying that interest to the bank. If I take 10,000, I get 8%, I'm making $800. So I'd rather make $800, give 400 of that to the bank because they're gonna charge me 4%, and the net is I keep $400. That keeping that $400 in my pocket, that $400 is what I then go use to purchase the things that I want, the things that make me happy, food, business, whatever it is. Um, that is the difference between ownership and working through cash flow. I'm interested in that 4% number if it's a good deal. So anyway, simple concept. Um, hopefully it makes sense to you. Um, if you have any additional questions, DM me, but it's you know sort of a fundamental thing. I wanna cover that before we go into the vestment section. Um, so you have that baseline because we're gonna get really detailed in some of those the calculations as we move forward.